Hello, everybody, and welcome to the DK and Bill Wrestling Podcast. I'm Bill. I'm DK. And a happy belated New Year to all of you. This is the second day of 2023 we're recording this on. So uh, let us be the last to wish you all a happy New Year. And a Merry Christmas, too. It's been a while since we recorded. I think uh, early December was our last show. Yeah, actually, I am sitting on one of my gifts. I got a new computer chair. So Oh, nice, nice. Very nice. Makes me, gives me the ability to move around now, so. Oh, you didn't have the swivel before, so. No, I was using a lawn chair for like six months, so. (laughs) Well, before we uh, started recording, I was saying 2023 is the year of Bill, so I guess we could start with the chair. And, um. Bill Bill took me down in in a bad fashion in fantasy championship last night. Mm-hmm. Najee Harris just couldn't couldn't be stopped. I thought, and you still got Josh Allen tonight. Like it it might be a merciful beatdown. Yeah, I think you need about three and a half points from Josh Allen to beat me. Yeah, so. I, I I actually called him earlier today, and I was yeah. like, Josh, just give me like six points, and we'll be. I uh, I tweeted Tanya Harding. But she's busy. <laughs> so I don't know if you, <laughs> I don't know if you saw that in the group chat last night. I uh, I was like, I need Tanya to go to Josh's house God. and you know, <laughs> do me a solid. Even then, you just pick up the backup on Buffalo, whoever that is. He'd probably get four points. I, so I have no idea. Wouldn't matter. Yeah, I know it was Trubisky last year. I don't know who it is this year. Yeah, probably some Trubisky's in Pittsburgh now. So yeah, I'm probably not. some uh, some guy has been floating around. Yeah. Cool. Um. Yeah, we we got a really big show planned. But yeah. Before we get to, uh, before we get to that, we're gonna briefly talk about what happened on SmackDown this past Friday, because we had an expected return in John Cena, and an unexpected return. As well as uh, Cher made her return to W. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, Charlotte Flair made her return Cher. to WWE. Cher. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, that was like if you read the dirt sheets, um, everyone like even before the John Cena video came out where uh, they were doing the tag match and Kevin needed a partner. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there was all these reports John Cena returning on December 30th. So it, yeah, like even if it would have been um, a surprise rather than an announced thing, but I, I always assumed that they wanted this for the ratings because it oh, is God, the yeah. New Year's Eve weekend. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things like kind of like Thanksgiving, like a little bit harder to get, get a, get a full audience. So that's probably a reason for seeing a return. Um, the Charlotte, I, I liked that she came back, but it didn't make sense to me with the booking. And this is, I was telling you this off air. Um, why would a heel Ronda Rousey accept that challenge? Mm-hmm. Um, like, would it made more sense for her to say, yeah, you can have your match, but not tonight. Like, throw the mic down and everyone boos. Right. And, and like, that's kind of what I expected to happen when I was watching. And then she... It was almost like she was not not a baby face, but she was like trying to be like, oh, I'm Ronda Rousey. You don't I could beat anybody. Yeah. And it was it was kind of cool how they did it with the with the um the arm breaker turned into a little um pin there. And and, and Charlotte's coming back and she she gets the baby face pop, but she pulls the tights. So is she a heel? Is she baby face? We don't know. No, nah, I'll be it? I'll be honest with the Charlotte thing, because I thought, and this is just a thought, I thought she was going to come back at the Rumble, because it just was sense. like, you know, yeah, that would have made sense. Yeah. I'm not upset that, n- number one, she came back, because she's been off for like, God, like half the year, almost. Yeah, they said May. I couldn't believe it was that yeah. long. Pretty cool. And honestly... I'm not even upset that she won the title, to be honest, because, and this is with all due respect to Ronda Rousey, it, this run just, 
did not work, has not worked. I don't know if she's putting in like 50% of an effort as she did the first time. Um, but, you know, Charlotte's the champ. And <laughs> you know what? It is what it is at the end of the day. So we'll yeah. see where this goes. Cena like they know what to do with her, really. Yeah. With Ronda. Like, like they want her to be a heel. Mm-hmm. But if if you want her to be this, I, I think in a perfect world, they'd want her to be like a heel Brock Lesnar, but a female character. Right. If that makes sense to you. No, yeah. Just now, don't know I... like the best way to do that. Like, I think in the long run, they always wanted to have a Becky versus Ronda WrestleMania match. Well, but, that, so, I'm glad you brought that up because I read a few days ago that plan has been scrapped. Okay. The 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 match, the new match, and this is, again, this is what I've read, so I can't, we can't confirm, we can't deny any of this. The new plan for Ronda Rousey for WrestleMania is for her to face Rhea Ripley. Okay. Which would be a pretty good match. I would be interested in that match. But one of them has to flip. <laughs> right. You can't have two heel badass bitches facing each other. Nobody would care. In my and opinion. I think it would be Ronda then. I would yeah. think. Yeah, like, okay, so this is how I would do it now. Yeah, I like that idea, actually. I thought they were going to do some horrible... Ray and his wife versus Rhea Ripley and oh, Don, God. Don Beck. Some <laughs> horrible tag match that should be on the pre-show. Um, just because they're doing all these things like on the, on the Christmas and the right. Tom oh, so gets to watch. arrested. I'm going to make it in jail. I'm not going to make oh. it a night. <laughs> I'm too pretty. <laughs> um, so I think the best way to do it is um, have Rhonda come out maybe to do like a heel promo and then like maybe you could have uh um man i'm i'm spacing on her name right now her her friend the mma star oh who is uh, uh what's Shana. her name <laughs> Shayna baszler sorry. yeah man no, sorry about that um you can maybe have Shayna attack her and maybe she might that that could maybe get her to go to the baby face side mm-hmm. but yeah yeah ria and um and Charlotte or uh, Rhea and um, Ronda, what? And that would just be like no titles, just like a like a yeah, match. No titles. Okay, I, I could probably get match. excited about it. I, yeah. Rhea's had like one of the best years for girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, she's come into her own as one of the top yeah. heels, I think, in WWE. Yeah. And like I've told you on previous shows, I think Bianca Belair is like ascended to the top of the. <laughs> of the rank like if we did a power ranking for girl for the ladies i'd probably have her on top like it used to be becky mm-hmm. uh, probably bianca so and then we're getting into royal rumble season this is exciting for our podcast and and just for being a fan so yeah I'm sure we'll do some royal rumble based episodes in the future yeah like we're, we're four weeks away from the rumble yeah you know and so. there's no like like they, they they had that day one pay per view last year on New Year's Day, right? That they canceled that. Fortunately, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, like I don't. It, it it was cool, but then it felt like it was kind of like one of those weird in your house pay per views where yes, like, yeah, really yes. gonna happen, but we should watch it anyways. But yeah, so John Cena returns. He looked pretty good, except for the bald spot. <laughs> yeah, that went viral. But I guess, you know, when you when you get older. Yeah, everybody that, ages. Everybody ages. Um it was nice to see him back. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I I think this is a four month run where he'll come back and then do WrestleMania and then probably probably be gone. Now that brings up uh an interesting thought because we're heading into WrestleMania. Yeah. And the Hall of Fame is on WrestleMania week and this year it's going to be in Hollywood. You know, yeah. LA. Or the, sure. but they're marketing it as Hollywood. Yeah. There's Close like enough. 
three or four guys that could be the headliner this year. And if Cena wanted to go in this year, this would be a pretty good year for him to go in. Considering what yeah. he's done, you know, in movies and, and with the, the Peacemaker show, you know, just the thought. Yeah. My, this, would um... like, this would be like a, hey, you know, if Rock can't make it, we got Cena. Yeah. I, I always thought that um, if The Rock wasn't part of WrestleMania, like if they don't do that Roman Reigns match that mm -hmm. it's been rumored for years, then it would be kind of cool to see The Rock go in in Hollywood because he's such a Hollywood guy now. Yeah. But um, another yeah. guy who's running the company now could go in as well as he uh, did retire yeah. – Officially, was it? It was WrestleMania last year when he came yeah, out last year, with the boots yeah. So, and then like you, you would never have a Rock and Triple H going in and saying, oh, "Yeah," because no. you always have like oh, a, God. one big guy. You always have like one big guy, and then you have like a secondary, like pretty big guy. But mm -hmm. if that makes sense, so and then, you could probably have then, those three guys that you named will probably be the headliner in the next three Hall of Fames. We just don't know the order. And and then, and I just want to throw his name in because he was originally going to go in a couple years ago, but because of COVID, Batista. Batista is still owed his day for the Hall of Fame. So that's another name, you know. He was going to go in? He was supposed to have gone Batista in. Batista was going to go in? For 2020. And then okay. we had the pandemic and sure. the following year, they were going to try to do like a, they are not tried, but they did like the class of 2020 and 2021. Batista couldn't make it for that. So they were like, okay, how about this? We'll save your induction mm -hmm. for another year. You're still going to go in. Sure. We just got to figure out. Oh, okay. So. Oh, so they, uh, it, that's the one they did at SummerSlam or something, right? That's supposed to usually be the Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess. Batista I don't know. Day. I was never the biggest uh, Batista fan, but he did have some pretty uh, good just when he was like the top guy. And he's with the world weight title. Like, big stuff as of late. You know, the, the oh, yeah. Guardian of the Galaxy, Galaxy movies, uh, the Glass Onion movie that just came out. I think he's yeah. going to be in a new M. Night Shyamalan movie coming out real soon, which yeah, actually I looks I saw pretty decent. That. So, Way to go, oh, yeah, there's going to be there's going to be a lot to discuss <laughs> from now until we get to WrestleMania. But like DK said, yeah, that this is this is the best time of the year. Yep, um, you got like NFL playoffs, and then you got the Royal Rumble season. It's like, yep. so good. Yeah, so, um. With all that being said, we're gonna have future shows on on current product and and our predictions and things like that, and then Royal Rumble based. And then last year we had like a whole month of WrestleMania theme stuff. Oh, I can't probably wait the to same do that again. We'll probably oh, be doing so the same fun. sort of thing. I have so many so many ideas. Um, and this show we're gonna do today, I've been. This is basically why I wanted to do this podcast with you mm -hmm. from the beginning. Yeah. Talking about stuff like this, so yeah, let's. Uh, we're we're about a month late from when I wanted to do it, just because it was the twenty five year anniversary. Yeah, but it's gonna be good today. I think we're gonna we're gonna talk about the whole the whole lead up. Mm -hmm. If if you didn't read the title of the podcast, we are doing the Montreal screw job <laughs> today. So, um. Yeah, and then I would like to try something. Maybe how would you have booked it? A what if scenario? Ooh, um, that's gonna be fun. There's there's a big moment in this, and we'll get to it where Vince can't pay bread anymore, right? On that Monday Night Raw, and then I'm gonna pose to you what I would do as a booker. Then I'd like to hear what you would have done. Okay. So, so, so you don't get to that. 
silly yeah. uh, situation in mean, Montreal. <laughs> so basically, um, we're going to do like a timeline of leading up to Montreal. And, and we're not talking like two weeks, four weeks. We're going from the beginning of 1997, I believe is what you had told me off air, DK. Like certain I, I was thinking almost Survivor, like what when Brett returns. It's gonna be yeah. a full year build. Full year, yeah. So Survivor Series ninety six. Yeah. That's kinda when all the shenanigans kinda start. Yeah. So why don't we start there at Survivor Series okay. ninety six? Because that's where Bret Hart officially returns or well has his first match since WrestleMania on pay per view. Against Stone yep. Cold Steve Austin in a really good match. That match is really good. Yeah. I just feel bad because it gets overshadowed by what happens a few months later at WrestleMania, which we'll talk about it a little bit. It wasn't supposed to happen. Right. Thanks to um, protagonist number two in this show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, the, it's a so great match. Same, like, I just like, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, on the same show that Brett um, returns, Sean yeah. loses the title to Sid in the Garden. Yeah. Um, and this is kind of the beginning. Mm-hmm. You got you got Sean. He'd been the champ since WrestleMania, where he mm-hmm. beat Brett in the Iron Man match. There was some hurt feelings there, I think, with uh, get the fuck out of my ring. Yeah. And... The the story, like the backstage reports go, Brett and Sean were kind of shooting on each other, but they had a plan. It was all about the return. They wanted, I don't know if you read, if you read this in Brett's book, he talks about it. He wanted all the wrestlers to think they were pissed at each other. Mm-hmm. He, he, want, he was like working the other wrestlers kind of. Brett was. And then, because then when Brett goes away after WrestleMania 12, he's asking his brother Owen, "What's what's going on in the locker room?" And they're like, they, "All the all the boys believed everything." So this was kind of a plan between um, Brett and Sean at the beginning, mm-hmm. but hey, things escalate. So yeah, Survivor Series. Sean Sean been champ since WrestleMania, like I said, um, and Brett's making his pay per view return. He had done some uh, overseas matches. He actually had some matches with Steve Austin overseas. Right. But if you weren't at that show, you didn't know that stuff. Mm-hmm. So this is Brett's return to TV. Has an amazing match. Like you said, the WrestleMania match, is, make, no one remembers this one as much. And then Sean, uh, Sean is kind of like booed the whole night here there in MSG. Yes, he There's is. The pro Sid crowd. There, I think they were maybe tired of the tired of the boy toy champion. There mm-hmm. in the Plus, you could kind of tell it was time for Sean to have dropped the belt anyway. I think. Yeah. So, Sid wins the belt. Brett it's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be Vader too. We could go back. It was and supposed talk, to be Vader. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. Um, like. There's so many. You you could talk about 96, 97 Shawn Michaels. And oh, we've wait, talked about we it on have. many We have <laughs> many times. And it always, all the Attitude Era stuff, it always, it, we end up talking about the same things, but it it's like from different perspectives. Yeah. So um, basically, Shawn didn't want to work with Vader after the SummerSlam match. So Sid gets thrown into his program. Mm-hmm. So the plan here is um, it was supposed to be Vader winning over Sean at MSG. And then for a return in San Antonio at Royal Rumble, which is Sean's right. hometown, right. get his big stadium win. They they wanted to fill that stadium. Mm-hmm. You, you think a Royal Rumble would be enough, but having a hometown guy in the main event doesn't hurt either. But um, that didn't work out, so Sid gets inserted. Sid wins the title here at uh, Survivor Series, and he, he's he's kind of part of this story too. He's he's kind of thrown in there a few times. Yeah, he is. 
I don't think I've ever asked you. What was your opinion on uh, on Psycho Sid? Honestly, I liked him. I did too. Um, I never, I never got the hate from Ric Flair on Sid. It's one of the few times I disagree with Flair. Because I thought, like, when you look at Sid, he's, what was he, 6'8", six, 6'9"? Six, I think he was about 6'9". He was just, like, a little smaller than Undertaker. Yeah, but he could move. He had yep. the look. He had the promo skills, even though, you know, he did scream a lot. But yeah, he um, had a little bit of nonsense in there too. He, I mean, not Ultimate Warrior nonsense, but he did oh have my some God. nonsense. Yeah, but no, I I liked Sid. I I actually did, and I yeah, thought I thought his power bomb as a kid was a cool finisher. Yep, I was. I do better. recognize, for the record, I do recognize Sid as a member of the Four Horsemen. Yeah, I do. Okay, so. Sorry, Rick. If I hurt your feelings, oh well. <laughs> well, if Rick listens to our podcast, I call that a win. So. I, I, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, well, we both know Tito Santana did. So. Yep. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um. Right, so. Yeah. So. Basically, so the winner of the Steve Austin Bret Hart match gets a title shot. Yeah. So you start thinking, I'm like, oh, are we having our, a WrestleMania 12 rematch? At an in your house, house. <laughs> like, I was like, like <laughs> I didn't know how they were going to do it, but that that was kind of like a tipping point for me, kind of thinking this was it for Sean. Mm-hmm. I, I liked how they did it, storyline wise, because Sid Sid ends up hitting uh, Jose Lothario with a yes. camera. Yes, and and Sean is like he he's like yeah forget the care. belt. Doesn't care about the belt. He just wants to make sure his friend's okay. Mm-hmm. It's in the storyline. And to so. Sean's credit, he sold that really good. He did. He did. But so, yeah. so now we go to the December in your house, which was called <laughs> "It's Time." They, they should just change it to to Sid or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. I, mean, I think I think Vader was on like the pre-show match or something. It was kind of funny. So the main event is Sid and Brett <clears throat> and yeah. Shawn Michaels is at commentary for the match. Yeah. And there's a point in the match where Brett accidentally collides with Shawn. Yeah. And this is what costs Brett the match. Basically. Cause he gets beat by Sid. Yep. So we'll save you a little bit of that. It was kind that. of a forgettable match. It, it wasn't like a great yeah. match, honestly. Um, yeah. I didn't. Plus, when when plus I watched it same... live, I did not expect Brett to win the title oh, no. at an In Your House. No. And, and this is what I hated about the In Your House back in the day when before they started having their own names. And it was like, I know this is In Your House, it's time, but it was still In Your House. Mm-hmm. That's, nothing major ever really happened at these they were like glorified house shows that were on tv looking just back on it of, just to kind of set you up for the big show that was coming out mm-hmm. the san antonio royal right. rumble one of the best and 97 if, it, if you guys listen to the show like it's one of the best years period so we get to the rumble and bret hart is in the rumble match and he, well, he's one of the big favorites. Yeah. And Steve Austin, you know, he's right. He's making his way to the top. He is. Yep. So we get to the famous ending of the match. <laughs> yeah. Bret Hart eliminates Steve Austin. He throws him out. Yep. The referees never see this. And there's like Austin, three refs. You're supposed yeah. to be on each side so this doesn't happen. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Mick Foley and Terry Funk were having their 518th fight at, you know, at this show. Yep. That was um, the 97 one. I couldn't remember if that was 98 or 97. Right. So yeah. Austin dumps Undertaker and Vader, who are going to play a, a role here momentarily. Yeah. And then Brett dumps out 
fake diesel. Austin dumps oh. Bret Hart out. Austin wins. <clears throat> yep. And this pisses off Bret Hart. Because it's like, I, I eliminated him. I <laughs> I eliminated this guy. Yep. And Brett just he loses it. Like he grabs Vince. Like he's almost like a rag doll pulling on Vince. And and this is like, this is kind of like the first time that they acknowledge Vince as kind of like yeah. the boss. Because yeah. he's just commentator Vince McMahon up to mm-hmm. this point. Exactly. Yeah. So after that is Sid and Sean, the rematch. Sean wins the belt, which we kind of said a couple minutes earlier, but that's okay. Yeah. So the next night on Raw, Brett quits because he said he's been screwed. Is, <laughs> you know, I've been screwed by the WWF. I've been screwed by the boy toy. Yeah. So that same show, because they're still in the one hour Raw. They have not yeah. gone the two hours yet, but they will in a couple of months. Yeah. Gorilla Monsoon, then president, who saved the World Wrestling Federation when he became president. Yeah, uh, I appreciate him doing that. Yes. <laughs> um, he says, okay, Austin, he he won the match. He he won the match. There's nothing I can do about that. However, he's not going to get the title shot at WrestleMania. What we're going <laughs> to do is we're going to have Steve face the final three people that were in there. Vader, Undertaker, and Bret Hart. They're going to face off at the next in your house. And the winner of that match is going to face Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania for the belt. And this is the first in your house that matters. Yes. Well, since the first one. Because the first one, you know, they were giving away a house. Yeah. Yeah, but the <laughs> matches the matches didn't matter. <laughs> but um, yeah, but all oh, joking aside, but yeah, this is like kind of the first one where like this is leading up to WrestleMania, the final four. Um yeah. it always makes me laugh when they uh when they talk about Stone Cold being one of the a three-time winner. They they never talk about how he cheated in the first one. It's always like, oh yeah, he's the greatest of all time. He didn't hey. cheat at all. <laughs> hey, history is written by the winners. Exactly. But yeah, so yeah, we're uh, so at final four, like before final four, you, you, yeah. you're you're about to get to the what the first uh, incident here with Sean. This is yeah. This is. Okay. This is I don't big. want to skip over anything. So. Yeah, like this is one where we're like, we got to get every single point on this. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a doozy. So they do a special Thursday night episode of Raw. And Shawn Michaels comes out to the ring. He's dressed up. He's in like fancy outfit. You know why it was a Thursday episode of Raw? Um, Uh, Stupid dog show. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> you ever, See, uh, ever read an article on Vince McMahon talking about the dog show on, on USA Network? It's great. I it's just, just want to say, I just want to say to any of our younger listeners, viewers of our podcast, those were the days. Like, you knew when Raw was going to be preempted because of either the dog show or tennis. You oh, yeah. knew it was coming. Yep. You just knew it was coming. <laughs> so oh, man, Sean's in the that. ring, and this is the famous I've lost my smile promo. Yeah. And the girls are crying. Like those girls were legit crying. Yeah. So Sean's like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna wrestle again. My knees giving out on me. I've gotta surrender the title. And he gives the title up. Yeah. So now the match at In Your House is later said is for the title, which makes it even more interesting. And that's pretty much what got me to order that pay-per-view when I was 11. Yeah. Because I don't think I would have ordered it if it wasn't for the belt. 
Well, it's still like a big moment. Like you're supposed to be like the winner of the match was supposed to face Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania. So it's still mm-hmm. like going to be big. Yeah. Having it for the title almost like like it seems bigger, but it's not as exciting for me. Like right. Like, I want to get that number one contender and then have a big match at Mania. Like, there was no buildup for for the eventual main event at WrestleMania once we uh, mm-hmm. go out there. And we'll get to what actually happened in a, in a moment or two with why Sean dropped the belt. So, we get to the In Your House Final Four. I... I reviewed this show with my friend Jim many years ago when we did our Royal Rumble podcast because we were like, this is an important point. You know, we yeah. have to do the show. Yep. Yeah. With the exception of the main event, this could have been an episode of Monday Night Raw. It really could <laughs> yeah. have. <laughs> well, I think they, they, they put like all their big stars in the one match. So exactly. it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to, um, get excitement from the other matches that match is freaking awesome was it a two-hour show at this point it was a two-hour show i remember in your house when in in 95 was one hour right it was a it was a two-hour show right this is the main event i think this match goes close to a half hour yeah it is like it still holds up that's the great part is this match still holds up to this day yeah, because Vader bleeds buckets, yeah. and, I, and I remember, you know, uh, in a, in a WWF magazine, you know, they would have like they would sell, you know, like oh, we're selling this issue of Raw magazine, and they had, you know, the the cover was Vader bleeding, but they covered it up, so it's like oh, you have to get this cover, you have to get this magazine yeah. if you you know didn't see it, so yeah. it's like. Yeah, I saw the match. I saw how bad he went. Yeah, I don't need to see the magazine. Yeah. So, Bret Hart eventually wins the match. Do yeah. you know... I'm going to test you real quick on this, DK. Okay. Do you know what the original plan was when they made it a title match? Um, I don't, but I'm sure it was a really stupid plan. Are they, were they going to make Steve Austin champion here? They were. Okay, that would have been awful. They well, wasn't ready for that yet. Well, here's the thing, and this and and I think it's but, even in Austin's book too. I'm glad they didn't do that. Austin was going to win the belt, and then drop it to Sid the next night on Raw. However, during the match, Austin hurt his knee, so Austin had to be eliminated. Right away, or, you know, as soon as they could. So that was, like, the plan going into the match? That's what I had heard. Austin was going to win. Austin was going to win. We would have never gotten, you know, 14 and Tyson. We would have never gotten that had this stuff. (laughs) Austin probably knew how bad of an idea this was and faked an injury, both of Shawn Michaels. So, Bret Hart (laughs) wins the belt for the fourth time. And he defends the belt the next night on Raw against Sid. And so part I never understood. Why wouldn't yeah. they just have Sid? Sid's number one contender. There's kind of a big show coming up. Yeah. It's called WrestleMania. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just have the winner of the final four match, who's now champion, and Sid was the number one contender, and he was the previous he, champ. He was the previous champ. Why don't you just have Sid versus Brett at WrestleMania? Because they knew Brett versus Sid could not sell out Chicago. Of course not. It was what awful. they did do would sell out Chicago. <laughs> yep. And 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 Brett and Austin were both not happy about the Brett hate, hated submission matches mm-hmm. because there's no false finishes. Which I, gr- I totally agree with him. Submission matches, like they're interesting because you don't know how it's going to happen, and you know, like there can't be really shenanigans. You know, there's going to be a clear winner. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there's no false finishes. So. So. How could it be good? 
So <laughs> Brett drops the belt to Sid, thanks to Steve Austin. And the Undertaker, who was the last person eliminated in the final four match, gets the title shot against Sid at WrestleMania, which will sell out the Rosemont Horizon. It did the biggest buy rate in WrestleMania history. No, it won't. Um, okay. Oh, now, I, I think we should go back to sure. why we didn't get what we were going to get. I didn't want to go too far without talking about it. Okay. So, Brett and Sean, the, the plan was Brett was supposed to get his win back at WrestleMania against yep. Sean. It was like, you know, we'll do, uh, you know, you give me this year, you give me the next year. Yeah. Seems Sean, simple. yeah, pretty simple, pretty easy. Sean then says to Brett the famous words, I will never drop a match to you. I will never let you win. And that is what starts the snowball effect yeah. of everything. But before we get to WrestleMania, there is one night, and I was thinking about this when, when we talked about this. Had you ever seen the Slammies from 97? Yeah. Do you remember what happened with Brett and Sean during the Slammies? No, I don't. I don't remember off, off the top of my head, no. Okay. So this is... This is the last Slammies for a while because they're still in the oh, we're goofy with the Slammy Awards, but yeah. we're still giving some serious awards to. Yeah, the so, match of the year, right? Yeah, that, match of the year. Okay, Brent and Sean win win that award. That that was kind of an obvious one. Yeah, although 90, looking, although looking maybe back Austin, at it, maybe Austin and Brett at Survivor Series. That or Sean mm -hmm. and Mankind, like looking back yeah. at it now, but yeah, but anyway, Sean and Mankind was amazing. So they both get their awards, yeah. Sean talks first, and pardon me, I had a kernel in my mouth. So Sean, like, he's up there, and at the end, he's like, I still beat you, Brett. And he gets off the stage, and Vince is laughing, and it's like, Oh. Stupid. Jeez. God damn it, 97 Shawn Michaels. Take his dick ever. We've <laughs> talked about it so many times, but yeah. oh my God. So I, I just wanted to bring that up because I stayed up to watch it. And I remember that part. Still beat you, Brad. <laughs> I do remember still that. Still beat you, <laughs> <laughs> Just going into business for himself. Yeah. So now we go to WrestleMania. Brad and Austin have maybe the greatest match in WrestleMania history. I, I would say it's in the top 10 easily, the submission. Yeah, match. I, I believe I ranked it my second. When we I did know I had it. I think I had uh, Steamboat and Savage, number one, and then and this one, number two. I think I had that one in my top five, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I, I got to find my book for that. So we already talked about it, so we'll save you guys some time. Yeah. Before the main event, Shawn Michaels comes out and he's going to do commentary for the main event. And here's Shawn dancing, smiling, hugging people. He's so happy, so joyful, so full of life. It's as if he never lost his smile. Yeah, he found it. Yeah, so it's always the last place you look. So then, <laughs> before the bell rings for the match, Red Hart comes out. He yeah. grabs the bike, and he starts to verbally attack Sean. And Vince, if you if you remember seeing this, he goes over to protect Sean. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I kind of thought this was like a little bit of a shoot. I wasn't. I, I was. I wasn't sure if it was a shoot or not. 
Right. But but Vince standing up and putting his arms over Sean, and then Sean's just <laughs> sitting there like not giving a fuck at all, I just like I don't give a <laughs> And then yeah, you didn't talk about this, but uh, Sean Sean comes out and then he like does the little NWO thing with his hand. <laughs> I don't know. You, you can catch it on the on the video, right. WrestleMania. It's just like, oh man, just just another shot by the worst human ever. Right. <laughs> he has a. <laughs> he does seem like he's turned his life completely around, and he's a genuine nice person now. But ninety six, ninety six to ninety ninety uh, nine, I guess. Yeah, ninety nine, even yeah. So. And then we get the match. Sean just stays on commentary. He doesn't really do anything. Brett comes and basically calls Sid the belt. Yep. Which takes us to the night after WrestleMania, which at this time is not referred as the biggest Raw of the year. It, it just isn't. It's just yeah. It's just another, another, another Raw, yeah. but yeah. So. There's a segment with Brett and Sean. And they're both in the ring. They're talking. And this pretty much solidifies Brett's heel turn because he attacks Sean Michaels. Yeah. And he goes after the knee. So this cha- you know, this gives us heel Brett Hart. And we go a little bit further because Sean's off TV for a little bit. Um. Well, actually, you know what? I I, I want to go back real quick because the week <laughs> before on Raw, Brett has the cage match with Sid. Brett yeah, loses. That's, that's kind of the heel. Like, isn't that is that the time where he pushes Vince over? Yes. Okay. And he's like, "Sorry, as you got your word for it." Yeah, and then, you know, he says he swears. It's like yeah, first time, does. and this is this is our wholesome Canadian hero. Mm-hmm. He Brett, Brett, I'm here. I'm here <laughs> if you need me. I get it. <laughs> yeah, people I, at work, they're not playing by the rules. They're everyone screwing you. Yeah, this is um, yeah. Honestly, like Royal Rumble was kind of the beginning. Yeah. But he was still kind of a baby face. Mm-hmm. He was just kind of like a different Bret Hart. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, he pushes uh, Vince over, says this is bullshit. Mm-hmm. And you didn't really hear that stuff on Monday Night Raw. No, this no you didn't. Like, like you're getting into more of a TV 14 as you go throughout the year. And then my favorite yeah. part is when he hits Pat Patterson and Vince just loses his mind. He's like, he just knocked out Hall of Famer Pat Patterson. Why that no good dirty son of a... <laughs> like, settle down, Vince. Yeah, seriously. You have a heart attack. So, <laughs> Sean's off TV for a little bit. Just well, a little I thought bit. he was never going to wrestle again. What happened, Sean? You got all better? So, the <laughs> then... We're going to plug, or we're going to plan, they had this planned, a match at King of the Ring, Bret Hart, and Shawn Michaels. Yep. However, Bret has a knee injury, and he's in a wheelchair. Yep. (laughs) So we don't get that match. We end up getting Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels. And they were the tag team champions at the time. Yes. But what happens a couple days later is lore, it's legend, it's one of the craziest stories of all time. <laughs> yeah. That's Jerry Lawler. He's got the hair in his office in a jar. So, and I love Jim Cornette because I love Jim Cornette's telling of this story. Oh, yeah. So this is like a day or two after King of the Ring. Vince yep. is having a meeting. I think it's Jerry who runs in and is saying They're Brett fighting. and Sean are having a fight. I and, don't think it was a fight. I think it was Brett just beating the hell out of Sean. Yeah, like he was kicking his ass. <laughs> yeah. 
And Brett, in this fight, took a chunk of Shawn Michaels' hair, pulled it out of yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, and then and, Shawn quits for unsafe work conditions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Shawn and, was going to go to WCW. Like, that, yep. that pretty much was going to be, you know. Yeah, and then Vince ended up paying them like three quarters of a million dollars to stay home. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it sucked because um, this was right before the Calgary pay per view. Yeah, and Sean would have been on that team, that team uh, USA. USA, and um, yeah, I, yeah. The, at this point, the Hart Foundation had been reformed. Um, they have a have a promo at the King of the Ring before like Brett's supposed to do commentary during the match, but then there's a whole bunch of stuff was wrong and tables mm-hmm. were broken. Um, and that, and at this uh, pay-per-view, he challenges the five wrestlers yeah. to come to Calgary, which pay-per-view I went to and to, uh, to face the, the heart foundation. Right. So I think it was supposed to be Sean. Sean was supposed to be on that team. Um, I think we ended up getting gold dust. And- yeah, Goldust or Ken Shamrock instead. Right. It was still a really good show. I'm I'm sure you've seen it. But we'll get into that now. Yeah. So we get the Calgary Stampede. No okay. Sean in sight. Yeah. Brett gets the single biggest reaction of his life. The la- the loudest. Like I explained to this on a, another 97 episode. But if you've ever been to an NFL game, it's third down and the defense is, and, and you're, you're at the home stadium and the home defense is on the field. If you've ever been to a game, mm-hmm. how loud it is. Because oh, yeah. the Hart Foundation, I loved how they did it because they didn't come out individually. They came out and like, they played Brett's music and then everyone just kind of came out. Yeah. So, and then that's how loud it was. It was like third down in a playoff yeah. game in the NFL. It was like, you could not hear that. You couldn't talk to the guy next to you. And I was like where the house setup was, I was right behind that. So you could kind of see the wrestlers coming out. It was mm-hmm. kind of cool. So the hearts win the match as they should. I mean, by cheating. Um, <laughs> oh, and with the roll. Still, up, I mean, how can you dice? argue? Yeah. Um, so because of this, Brett gets the next title shot against yeah. Undertaker at SummerSlam. Well, somebody had to come back. Yeah, you can't just have Brett having like all the spotlight to himself. Exactly. So Shawn Michaels comes back and basically he wants to be a part of SummerSlam. Yeah. So they decide, all right, we're going to have you be the guest referee for Undertaker Bret Hart. The condition to Shawn being the referee, storyline wise, if you cost Bret the title, you can never wrestle in the United States again. Yeah. That's the stipulation. Because Brett had a stipulation where if he lost, he could never wrestle in the U.S. again. Well, this is the part that kind of bugged me because the stipulation was if you don't call it right down the middle. Yeah. You but have it, to call it, it down the middle. It, it wasn't if you screw over Brett. It was if you don't call it down the middle. Mm-hmm. And everyone knows what happens. Right. He hit Undertaker in the head with a freaking chair. That's not calling it down the middle. That's not calling it down the middle. But it was an accident. It was an accident. But ref shouldn't have a chair. (laughs) Well, Brett brought it in first. Brett did it first. (laughs) You sound like my kids. (laughs) (laughs) Teacher. I don't care who did it first. I'm ending this now. (laughs) That's probably what Vince had to do in the back with Brett and Sean. You said in that corner. Think about what you did. So Brett wins, which we, which was our first watch along was that match. Yep, still a great, great match. It's a great match. It's one of the best matches of '97. It is. So 
after that, Brad and Sean go their separate ways in kayfabe. So, Brett stays champion because there's really no true contender. And, and I apologize to part. any... I yeah. apologize to any fan of the Patriot. The Patriot was not winning the belt. This was the worst title run in a long time in WWF. Yeah. Um, the problem that happened here is Brett was the number one heel in the business at SummerSlam 97. Yeah. When Sean hits the Undertaker with the chair and puts him into this heel situation now you have your top two guys and they're both heels Mm -hmm. now steve austin was coming up but he ended up getting getting hurt on this pay-per-view so you don't know what you're going to get what you don't know if he's ever going to wrestle again at this point so that's the part that i think kind of derailed bret hart and that kind of starts everything that's about to go down yeah is that bret is a heel in america and a baby face in Canada. But now Sean has become this huge heel for costing the Undertaker the title. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you didn't really know what was going to happen until I, I think it was like the Raw after SummerSlam. Yeah. When, when he kind of ju- gets with uh, Triple H there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you kind of see DX forming before we knew well, really what sure. it was. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to throw that in. That's why uh, I, I, I think Bret Hart's uh, championship run wasn't great because, like, who who would you have put him with? Like, the Patriot, like, you never expected him to win. He did right. get that win on Bret and on a Raw before SummerSlam. But, if, yeah. You know, you know if, if they hadn't, if they weren't doing the whole dude love thing, I'd have put Mankind maybe as a challenger because he didn't need to win it no you know he didn't need to win the title yeah and it was dude love at the time right right so it's like well you gotta kind of got yourself in the corner yeah so sean wins hell in a cell of bad blood which you guys could check out in our archives to yeah get- it was more of a brett and sean episode we don't have to talk about each thing yeah it's a ground zero match right brett Brett oh, and and then, and also something that we forgot to mention, and I'll just mention it very briefly, was at one point in the spring of 97, Sean references how Brett has had sunny days with Brett Hart, <laughs> which starts this whole thing of like, is Brett cheating, you know, with Sonny? You know. I think he was cheating, but not with Sonny. No. <laughs> so, so now Sean. we get Sean yeah. was with Sonny. So now we get, or we're setting up Brett and Sean for Survivor Series. Yeah, and they're they're including a lot of people like in this story to get there. Like I remember, the Nation was involved. I think on one episode of Raw. Yeah. Um, maybe the DOA. I don't remember if the DOA got involved or not, but I remember. The whole thing with the nation where someone stole one of their hats. That was, (laughs) yeah, it was, it was a wild time, folks. Okay. So before we go ahead here, we got to go back just a little bit. Okay. Um, Okay. One night only. Yes. Um, Two days before this or three days or something. I don't know. It was a raw in at MSG. This is where Vince Tells Brett he can't honor his contract. Mm-hmm. Brett's the champion. Yeah. And Vince is going to help him get the WCW deal, which seems crazy just because he doesn't yeah. want to pay Brett the money that he offered him. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of where I would take the title off Brett if I was Vince. Now, this, this is curious what I thought. What, what you would have done one night only you have this huge uk pay-per-view that you're trying to get buys for you, right you have a match the undertaker versus brett at this pay-per-view you could have forgotten all about this montreal thing that we're about to talk about and get the title off the guy that 
is going to leave basically December, I think his uh, contract was up December 10th or something. It was the day after the December pay-per-view. Okay. So you could, if if you're worried about, like I'm thinking at this time that Vince just assumed Brett would be fine dropping a title before he left. But you could have definitely had had uh, Undertaker win the title here from Brett at the UK show. But here is where I'm going to say, yeah, but. Oh, yeah, there's tons of yeah, buts. <laughs> totally. With that one, while I like the idea, you also have Sean and Davey Boy. Yeah. At that show. Yeah. I don't see any way if what we knew ended up happening, you would have let two members of the Hearts lose on the same show in England. Well, when you plan this, Davy Boy is supposed to win. Right. Up to about four hours before the show. We've talked about it many times. He dedicated yes, the match to his sister that was dying. Yeah. And then Sean said, no, I'm winning. But the plan was Sean was going to win the title. And then when they went back after WrestleMania, Sean was going to, like the Bulldog was going to win the European title back. Right. I don't know if they expected Sean to keep it for that long, but he was going to get a big championship win. They kind of wanted to build, like having the Bulldog he lost now now it is his reclamation mm-hmm. on getting the title back so i kind of get the reasoning yeah. but i don't know if you should have especially with under the circumstances that went down i'll give my booking thought or my booking idea in a little bit okay so and i'm also going to have a hypothetical of uh what if brett stayed and then okay. what we'll, what we'll go to WrestleMania and we'll see see what we do right. there. So this is where also at the same time I, I think we should mention the Bret Hart documentary, which ends up becoming Wrestling with Shadows, is being yeah. filmed. Oh yeah. So we get to the weekend of Survivor Series, and. They throw this out because Brett's like, I'm not dropping the belt to Sean. No, I'm just screw him. Yeah. He was willing to drop it to anybody. Anybody else. He would have dropped, you know what? He would have dropped it to D'Lo Brown instead that's, of Sean. Michael. That's the that's where people are saying, Oh, Brett, Brett screwed the business. No, no he, he just didn't like Sean. He, he didn't yeah. want to lose Sean. Sean, Sean didn't show him the respect. That that he should have deserved. He would have dropped the belt to Headbanger Mosh before he would have dropped it to Shawn Michaels. Yeah. So, so someone, so they say to Brett, "Okay, how about this? We got a house show Friday in Toronto. How about yeah. you drop the belt there? No, I'm I'm not. No, I'm not losing in Canada. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so they have." One more house show before Survivor Series. This one's in Detroit. <clears throat> How about you drop the belt in Detroit? He's like, no, I'm I'm not dropping the belt in Detroit. I'm not losing the belt. <laughs> yeah. So now this has creative completely, <clears throat> you know, in a corner. Yep. Because at the time, Vince is still, you know, he's ultimately the final decision. <laughs> Yep. We have to remember, in 97, we have Jim Cornette and Vince Russo, among other people in this. And they're really good friends. Oh, they're like BFFs. <laughs> they don't hate no. each other at all. <laughs> so, everyone is coming up with every single possible idea that they can for this match to find an ending to this match. Yeah. 
And it's like, it doesn't work. Like every, like I bet, and I'm, I'm guessing they must have come up with 20 different endings. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but there's, there's a flaw in there somewhere. Yeah. And according to Jim Cornette in a shoot interview, he referenced how, you know, back in the 30s, and, and this is legit, this is true, how there was an incident where a wrestler who was champion refused to drop the title, and the promoter did a, a kind of a screw job yeah. to get the belt off of him to get it on his guy. So we get to the day of the show. And and I'm only mentioning Cornette because, you know, he's talked about this. And we'll mention Russo as well in a little bit. Yeah, in the Dark Side of the Ring uh, Screwjob episode, they both are interviewed on that show. Yeah. So Jim goes to Vince and he's like, Vince, do you have an ending for this match? He's like, yep, I do. And Jim's like, that's all I needed to hear. Yeah. Didn't say anything else. He's like, okay. So, I think I've said this to you. I got this pay per view that night. Like I got, it. I watched the show. Well, yeah, it's Sean Brett finally. Brett, he right? Had it's it's and a I year think, and a half. Well, how was the internet at this point? Like, did did people know that he was leaving? I didn't have the internet in '97. Like I know Jim Ross in commentating mentions. There's rumors that this is Bret Hart's last match. I, I mean, I'd imagine. Which I found odd that they would say that during the match. Like, that, that that's just like a spoiler saying, okay, well, now we know Sean's going to win. Like, like I didn't know. Because, I, like I said, I didn't have internet. You ever remember if I knew or not? Because Bret had a column in the newspaper. Right, he did, a weekly column. Cow, the Cowdery Sun. Mm-hmm. And I think... He said something about going to WCW in the column. Right. Now, I'm, I'm wondering, I have to go back and try to remember that. So, we get to the match. There is major <laughs> security, like, in the <laughs> arena for this match. Yeah. And Sean comes out first, then Brett... And they fight outside the ring for a good long time. Yeah. I'm sure they're like, look, you guys have have this built up animosity between the two of you. We're just going to like let you guys beat the shit out of each other for the first 10 minutes. We're going to let you guys just go at it. Do whatever the hell you want to do. Yep. So they fight. You know, it's uh, it's a Saturday in Muskogee if you're JR. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> and then they eventually do get in the ring, and we do eventually have a match. And they're wrestling. It's a you know, it's a good match. I thought it was a great match, honestly. Like people don't watch that match for the match. They only hey, watch it for. Do- the You're end. not going to do a Survivor Series 97 review and then, hey, this match is a A plus or whatever we say. Right. But <laughs> So then we get to the ending. Earl Hebner takes a bump. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, it's Earl. Sean doesn't move on Brett. Sean then steps in. And he locks in the sharpshooter. He turns him over. Yep. Earl's asking. He calls for the bell. And Brett try like Brett kind of tries to break out of the move. Well, the plan was because they talked about it. it, The plan was um, Brett was supposed to reverse it. Right. And then that's when I think there was supposed to be interference. Right. And everyone looks shocked. They're like, what just happened? Sean's pissed for 
God knows what reason. Well, because he's supposed to not know. Right. And he's told him not to say anything. Fred is pissed, and he spits in Vince's face. Like, it's a perfect <laughs> shot. Oh, yeah. Well, probably the best spit of all time. Like, maybe the the great. Yeah, it's probably the great. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's like a 20. <laughs> yeah, good call. So, Sean wins the title. And, and I remember, because there would be times where if I'm watching a pay-per-view, one of my parents might stay stay up with me. Yeah. My dad, I remember this. My dad's working overtime that night because he was, um, you know, he used to work as a dispatcher. Okay. For, so my mom's with me. I watch this match and I'm even looking at her and I'm like, what just happened? And she's not a fan. Yeah. And it's like, what just happened? That's the reaction I have. What just happened? Yeah, Shawn Michaels just made Bret Hart submit to the sharpshooter in Montreal. Right. The worst finish. You know, all the stuff that Bret said no to, that's probably the number one thing that he would never do. Exactly. Number one. It is his own finishing move. Yeah. So they Brutal. go off the air with Sean going to the back with the title. Yeah. And then what we don't see on the show, you know, Brett's like, W. Yeah. C W. <laughs> and then yeah. he breaks the TV equipment. And Brett Which waves maybe made him feel better. I don't know. So then, and and again, I this was all off air. Yeah. And this is where the movie kind of helps because we're in the back. Brett asks Sean, Did you know this was going to happen? And Sean's like, I'm innocent on this, man. I swear <laughs> to God, I did not know this was happening. Not the performance. Mm hmm. I had to like, this one. And, and then he reveals on, like, the first episode of Confidential, like, four and a half years later, yeah, I I knew this was happening. Uh, that, that's kind of funny you said that, because he's like, so I am I found God and all that stuff. I can't lie. He's like, I know you're going to ask me about Montreal, because that's what everyone asked me. <laughs> he's like, I, I got to come clean. <laughs> One of my it's favorite kind of lines. Like, yeah. One of my favorite lines ever about Sean finding God is from Jim Cornette. He's like, "Oh, Sean found God. I didn't even know God went missing." <laughs> Cornette's the greatest. So then, <laughs> Vince goes in to meet with Brett alone, yeah. and I'll be honest, I would not have done what Vince did. Honestly, he's like, Brett, I'm going to let you have one free shot at me. And, oh, it to him. and then depending on, you know, what you hear or say, it's like either Brett took the punch, like he gave the punch or you had a three stooges scenario where someone fell into Vince and then Brett punched. It, it's absolutely it, it, it's weird. It's one of yeah, those weird yeah, yeah. I, I've heard many different versions of it. It seemed like Brett Brett said, I'm gonna take a shower. If you're out here when I get back, then I'm gonna knock you out. Yeah. And then apparently he was in the towel still, drying drying off. And then he just basically uppercut at Vince. Yeah. Good and shot. Then, and then of course the famous line in the movie. Brett's wife is talking to Hunter. Hunter's oh like, I didn't know this was happening. He's just like, you know, you know this was going to happen. When you go to meet God, he's going to punish you. <laughs> yeah, she was she was something else. She was. <laughs> so then the domino effects starts to happen. 
Yeah. Because Mick Foley quits the yeah. WWF for like maybe 24 hours. About 30 hours. Yeah, about that. He missed the Raw. He missed the Raw, but then. And, and it's like Jim Cornette had to call him and he's like, look, I would have quit too, but this is our job. Yeah. Would you quit if somebody, you know, and basically he convinces Mick to go back. And even Brett was like, Mick, please go back. I, I appreciate what you're doing. You don't have yeah. to do this. Yeah, this is your livelihood. Like, it's one yeah. thing to have someone's back, but he was on his way to WCW, so. Right. And then on the night, on the episode of Nitro, at the beginning of the show, the NWO comes out with Canadian flags. Which he couldn't Eric's, show up. Yeah, he, he couldn't show up till uh, December right. anyway. And Eric's like, hey, way to give Vince a punch. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, Brett, and this is, like, this whole thing just gets wilder and wilder. Yeah. Brett goes on one of the sports shows in Canada. And he says flat out, Off the I did not win any of those belts. They were predetermined. Yeah. And it's like, wow, Brad. Just wow. On November 9th, 1997, that's when Bret Hart's wrestling desire, it, it, it died. Yeah. Like, and he never got it back. No, never did. Now, there's another part to this that we got to mention. Vince Russo, who, you know, depending on how everybody feels, according to him, after Survivor Series, Vince and them were like, we did it. It's done. We're going to move on. Yeah. And Vince uh, Russo's like, no. What are you doing? You're going to just let this drop? We got to keep this going. Yeah. And the that's when, character was created. Yeah. And that's when the following week on Raw, we get the Vince JR interview about yeah. Brett and the famous line from Vince, Brett screwed Brett. Yeah. And it all depends on what side you look at it. Right. I'm on the, like, I, I know you wanted to get my perspective because I am Canadian. Brett did screw Brett. There's a, like, this is a direct quote from that interview. There's a time-honored tradition. Mm -hmm. When a wrestler's leaving a territory, you drop the belt. Yeah. Brett lived his character Brett the Hitman Hart. He was he Brett the Hitman Hart. He was the WWF champion. It, it it wasn't a wrestler carrying a prop to him. He lived it. And he got disrespected by Shawn Michaels. And he did not want to leave and have his last moment in the WWF losing to Shawn Michaels. Mm -hmm. I, I I totally get where he was coming from. But at the same time, this is the company that made him pretty much like stampede wrestling. He, he it was, was the setup. It was like the setup. Stampede was the setup. Yeah. But he wouldn't have become who he was without the WWF. So I totally take the side of the WWF, but I probably would have tried to do it a little differently. So, well, where do you come off on this? Are Brett screw Brett or Vince screw Brett? Or Sean screw Brett? <laughs> I don't think Sean screwed Brett. I, I, I don't. They just flat out hated each other. Whoever came, uh, whoever came up with the idea of that ending, either it be Vince, either it be Sean, either it be whoever, that's who did it. Yeah. 
Um, I look at it at the end of the day as Vince screwed Brett, but at the same time, Brett screwed Brett. You said everything for why Brett screwed Brett. Yeah. Vince screwed Brett not because of hatred or anger or anything. Vince had no other choice. Yeah. Because we we have to remember, <clears throat> as much as the WWF was getting better in 97, WCW was still beating them in the ratings. Oh, yeah. Until like Vince, April 98. Yeah. Vince had to do something to help his company or else they <laughs> might not make it. No, totally. And as much as Vince loved Brett, and, and I really feel that way, Vince loved Brett. Yeah. He had no choice. He had to do, he had to save his company. Of course, who wouldn't do that? So, you're over one employee, or or you, you be the nice guy and then you lose your business. Right. So, at the end of the day, I, I kind of look at it at 50 50. Vince screwed Brett, but Brett screwed Brett as well. Exactly. Now, this is okay. So at, at SummerSlam, before SummerSlam, mm-hmm. I think the plan would have was Austin. At, I'm talking WrestleMania here. Right. Uh, I think Austin winning over Brett is yeah. the plan. I don't know. I think they transitioned to Sean because he was, he became the top heel. Yeah. And Brett wasn't getting, but like we said before, he was he was in a bad situation when he won that title. Mm-hmm. He, like, who are you going to put him with? Like, like what I wanted to do with this show because I, I knew it was going to be a long one. Like, a hi- hypothetical rebooking the end of '97. Okay. Um, and different situations you could have done. Um, I don't know who you can put in that title picture to face Bret Hart when Bret Hart is the heel and have the heel continue to keep the title. All right. I don't know. It's, it's super interesting. And I kind of a reason why I wanted to do this show, but. Okay. Here's the one thing I, I, I would not change from, you know, what we know now to what we would do. Yeah. Shamrock would have gone in the title shot at the December pay-per-view. Yeah. I would have had Brett and Shamrock face off at the December in your house. Okay. And then. So what happens at Survivor Series then for you? Okay. Let's say, okay. So with this hypothetical for both of us, Brett is not going to WCW. He's still right. got the contract. He's WWE. Okay. Yeah. So here's here's what I would do. So I'm I'm gonna save the um how I would book Brett leaving WWF for in a in a few minutes. Okay. Brett beats Sean in some way, like a like a roll up or something. At then Survivor Brett, Series. That's all the same. At Survivor Series. Okay, that's all I'll say. Gotcha. Brett, the next night on Raw, says, as long as I'm champion, Shawn Michaels will never get another title shot in Canada. <laughs> okay. So, re- so remember I like that. It. I like it. So then he's like, I want the next person to be someone of my, you know, like ability, my quality. And that's where Ken Shamrock comes in. Okay. Sean does not have a match at this pay per view. Sean comes back. Like we let Sean be off TV for a few weeks. Sure. Sean comes back, beats up Bret Hart. So Bret still wins, but you know he doesn't get the you know the sharpshooter win or however. Okay, so is Sean a heel? Sean. 
<laughs> yeah, it's already again, it's big, the, right? yeah, but yeah, <laughs> um, that was the issue with them at this right. point because because you could do Brett Sean in Montreal because Brett's a babyface in Montreal, right? I think what you get is maybe Brett starts to realize that hey, not all Americans are as bad as Sean. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Like the the match with Shamrock, you know, makes him start to realize, hey, maybe you Americans aren't as bad. Yeah. So then you go to the rum. You make that match like false count anywhere or no DQ, no count out. Just let it be like the blow off. Whoever wins wins and then that's it so okay. brett wins with the help of say owen and this is a a match with sean at royal rumble at the royal rumble and brett's the champion still and right. he beats him again okay i would still have austin win that rumble for the february pay-per-view maybe do maybe do what you did a six or an eight man tag where you could yeah. have Brett, Owen, Davy Boy, and Jim, because Brian Pillman, you know, sadly <laughs> passes away. Yeah. Which which I do have a thought about that, which I, I've never said, which I'll get to in a little bit. Okay. And you could have a team with Austin. Um, you you could put any any three guys there. Just you don't put Sean in there though. And I'm going to tell you why. Because during the match, Sean's going to come, Sean and Hunter are going to come and attack Owen. And Davey's going to get involved. Which gives you a tag match at WrestleMania of Sean and Hunter against Owen and Davey. Because Jim Nyhart doesn't really matter at this point. No. Let's do heart calls and get some to Gets him a job again. Right. <laughs> um, I still think Tyson is involved in the match, but he's more of <clears throat> more of like a, you know, I respect Bret Hart, I admire Bret Hart, he's my guy, you know, even though Austin's yep. my guy, but I love Bret Hart. Yeah. So then you get to the WrestleMania. Austin beats Brett with the stunner. After the match, you know, Tyson raises Austin's hand. Brett takes the belt from Austin. (laughs) He looks at the belt and then he presents Austin with the belt. Passing the torch. Yeah. And that's what happens. Yeah. I, I like that. It's um, like you're never getting Sean to do any of that stuff. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that I know. Um, that's the problem with this two top heels. It doesn't work. Um, okay, so Survivor. So, well, this is my version. Okay. Um, Survivor Series. Um, I would probably like The Undertaker isn't involved in this pay-per-view. That's right. I would probably get him into this match. Triple threat match. And then if you want. Now, I I, I think Undertaker or Sean gets a heel win here somehow. Like like the Undertaker choke slams Brett. Mm Mm-hmm. Brett's down. And then Sean rolls up Undertaker, pulls the tights, Sean's the champ. Okay, so at least we both have the same like ending of a roll up, a quick yeah. pin, basically. Yeah. So Brett loses the title, but he didn't lose the title. Mm-hmm. The, you, then you could have an, uh, an Undertaker, and then Ken, Ken Shamrock's the number one contender for some reason here in this situation. <laughs> and you could have the Undertaker. You can have the Undertaker beat 
beat uh beat Shamrock here. And, and maybe there's some interference with uh with with Brett. And and then I can see see Brett beating the Undertaker here at the Royal Rumble. Okay. Sean just kind of goes away for me in this situation. Now I know he gets hurt in the real ninety eight rumble, and that's why he's he kind of leaves for four Limited. years. Yeah. Um, so for me, Sean just kind of takes a step back here. Then you got the Undertaker loses to Brett at the Royal Rumble. Brett probably gets some interference from the Hart Foundation. And then uh, Steve Austin wins. I don't I don't see a scenario with Mike Tyson um, with a Brett versus Austin. But okay. I, I like I liked how it actually went down with with DX mm-hmm. and um, Tyson and then Tyson kind of like in the end they're they're all saying oh it was us we're screwing him over from the beginning we yeah. knew what we were doing but yeah I just don't see that that scenario where uh, where Tyson could be involved. Oh, in Tyson would have never Tyson would have never screwed over Brett. I just want to no. say no. Um, but like similar, like the year before, you had the you had the submission match, and Ken Shamrock was the referee, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe you could have Tyson here, maybe as an in ring referee, rather than just like the guy standing outside with the DX shirt on, right? Getting paid millions of dollars to one, two, three, and then one punch on. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, like like there's so many different scenarios. Now, now with my Survivor Series scenario, that was kind of like maybe if Brett was leaving, they could have done that. Oh, let me I, I gotta put one thing in real quick. Sure. We still have Kane. Yeah. And Paul Bearer. That's the issue, right? How did they get involved? <laughs> like with your uh with your scenario. It's like Sean's not going to do this. <laughs> yeah, like at Royal Rumble, Undertaker faces Sean, but in your situation, it was Brett versus Sean. Right. Maybe, I, I don't know where Undertaker comes in. This is why this job is a little harder than people think. It is. It really is. Um, But, like, long story short, I think at SummerSlam, they wanted Austin to be the next champion at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. And at the time, Bret Hart was the top heel. Sean getting himself as a referee at SummerSlam changed everything. Because if there's if if there's no special referee and Bret just can't, like he wins another way, Sean isn't a heel. Yeah. Right. Like, like he was a dancing around guy that you love to hate, but he was still like a baby face. Like at that match, that match that he faced uh, Austin at King of the Ring, they were both baby mm-hmm. faces. Right. Um, and Vince hates that idea of doing a baby yeah. face from some baby face. Like he that's it. No. So this whole thing, Sean becoming a heel. Now, now it turned into one of the greatest factions of all time. So it's it's kind of hard like to go, oh, maybe if we could go back, maybe we wouldn't do this. I, I think he would probably still do everything the way it went down. Right. Um but yeah, and then Austin still still gets to win at a 14. Yeah. In every situation. Because without the Austin McMahon ninety eight, there is no WWE, I think. I think WCW wins the Monday Night War yeah. without because if if you look at ninety eight, like if if Brett and Sean were still running around doing their stuff that they were doing in ninety seven and ninety six, mm-hmm. people are watching the NWO. Absolutely. Um, and what about this scenario? Like, there's so many scenarios. What if Sean at King of the Ring ninety seven? What if he shows up on Nitro? What if what if Vince lets him go? Right. Shawn Michaels joins the NWO. 
I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if WCW would have known what to do with with the Shawn Michaels. Same same way with Brett. Oh my! How they brought him in okay. as a referee. And, well, well, first off, imagine the we are ego around at WCW <laughs> at that time because you have you would have Michaels, Hall, Nash, Hogan. <laughs> I'm glad you said Hogan because Hogan almost came back. I don't right, know if you and knew that. Savage almost came back at one point. In 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 uh, '98, January '98, Hulk Hogan had a meeting with Vince McMahon about returning. Imagine it could have been Austin Hogan at WrestleMania. <laughs> All right, now I I, I will oh, say because I do want to mention Brian Pillman real quick. Okay, and and I've had this thought. If Pillman is still alive, I do think what happened in Montreal does happen. Okay. But I don't think Pillman leaves. I don't. I no. think he stays because he's got the money there. One, you know, because he was in a storyline with uh, Goldust and Marlena at the time. Yep. When he passed away. So I think you have the finish there, and then Pillman kind of goes off on his own. Okay. And then maybe, that's the key word, maybe Pillman is the first challenger for Austin, not Dude Love. Yeah, if we're, if we're talking Pillman, like I, I know like we'll probably do a Pillman show, but Brian Pillman, if he didn't have an ankle injury, could have been Stone Cold Steve Austin. He could have. He really like could. He had that personality that the fans loved when when Austin was just against authority. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen ECW Brian Pillman? Like that's what he was. Yeah. He he was more controversial. He would stir shit up. Like I think I think if he didn't get into that car accident, under the right circumstances, Brian Pillman could have definitely been a Steve Austin type character. Right. It's all about the right situation. Like Austin, Austin was in the right situation. He was like w- without the uh, without the curtain call. There's no Austin three sixteen. Yeah. One one Maybe. thing I do want to mention, and then I'm going to get to how I would have booked Brett losing the title. Okay. Is Vince and, and we forgot to mention this. Vince and Brett had talked and Vince had said to Brett, when you go to WCW, please do not take our world title with you on to Nitro. Cause if yeah. he had, that probably would have been the end, you know? And Brett was like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, you imagine <laughs> like everything that went down when Medusa dropped that Medusa, title man. that nobody cared about into the trash, and it was like one of the biggest stories in wrestling. Okay, so now you gave earlier your how would you book Brett to lose the belt? Here's how I would have done it. You're talking Survivor Series, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is a completely different booking here. Sure. That match ends in a double disqualification because Hunter will come out and then Bulldog and Anvil will come out. So it's still the same match. Yeah. So they end it as a double DQ. What you then do to play smart is you have Brett stay off television for a few weeks and you have Sean go and say, I want another match, but I want it in America. Okay. So Brett's then bring, So you then bring Ken Shamrock into the picture because you know, because I'm because I'm in the mindset of Austin's Intercontinental Champion, Undertaker's got Kane. And as much as I liked Ahmed Johnson, I can't really yeah. trust Ahmed Johnson in this situation. Nine to ninety seven. Shamrock could say I'm the next in line I'm next in line 
So Bret Hart comes on TV. This is a rare Bret appearance at this point. He's like, I will give Shamrock his title shot. Yeah. Sean, if you beat Shamrock, I'll also give you a title shot. We'll make it a triple threat match. Okay. Sean wins the match by however whatever means necessary. Then you get to the in your house. And so it's triple threat. You, yeah, triple threat. So what what day was Brett officially going to WCW? Well, it was supposed to be the Monday after the December pay-per-view. Okay. Here's what you do. You have the match. Match goes on. Brett gets taken out of the picture at the end. Sean beats Shamrock to lose or for Sean to win the belt. Brett never gets pinned. Brett never, you know, Brett's not in the fall. Yeah. He just loses the belt. Yeah. And Brett gets a more gracious leave from WWF. And then the yeah. next night goes to Nitro. Yeah. So what you would have had there. So that's your scenario of him going to WCW still. And and here's what I would do with as Vince. As Vince, I would say to Brett, I can't honor your, because obviously he can't honor his contract. He would go, I will write you a check when you have left. Yeah. I will give you X number of dollars as a thank you for staying and for doing this. Mm-hmm. We'll say it's like six figures. Kind Post of dated. like a <laughs> Post kind of as like <laughs> kind of be like, thank you for what you did. Thank you for everything you've done. Here's a nice, you know, bonus. Yeah. For doing what you did. <laughs> and then Brett, yeah. you know, says his goodbye on on the pay-per-view, like he does a wave, says goodbye. He leaves and then he goes to Nitro. And he does whatever he does at Starcade that year. Yeah. You know, but I, but I think, but I like yours as well because it's drawn out. Cause well, my, mine's with um, Brett Sting. So, like, in, in a situation where, like, in October, you know Brett's leaving. Mm-hmm. You got to talk to, you got to talk to Brett in October. Okay. So you're, we have you till December, December uh, 9th or whatever the date was. Mm-hmm. How do you want, like, get that dialogue going? Yeah. If you, if you have this stubborn Bret Hart, because at the time he was willing to drop it to Sean in October, then they had the conversation that we never touched on. It was Brett talking to Sean saying, I hear we're working on Survivor Series. I just want you to know, with all the problems we've had, I'll know, you'll, you'll always be safe in the ring with me. Mm-hmm. And I've got no problem dropping the title to you. Then Sean looks at him and says, I appreciate that. I'm not willing to do the same for you. And then he walks out of the room. That's when everything hit the fan yeah. for this Survivor Series match. Sean being a prick. Mm-hmm. All Sean had to do was say thank you and shake his hand. Yeah. Sean could have won with the super kick in Montreal again. It didn't make a lot of sense to for for Brett to lose to Sean twice. It, w- it would have been so much better if if Brett had beat Sean at WrestleMania 13. And then Sean, sure, Sean gets two of the two of the three and then gets the title. But yeah, like that's why the story is so fascinating. There's so many situations. Um, so if you get to if you get to that point of you're at Survivor Series and Brett is leaving, we we know this. He's the champion. Mm-hmm. I think you gotta you gotta find a way for everyone to be happy. Now now they want Sean to have the title because he's the top heel, right? Because you're and you're at that point where the chase for the title is pretty exciting at this time of year 
you have that one guy that that's the next one going yeah. the Royal Rumble season. Um, and then you have the heel champion. It's it's kind of what they've done since Hogan. Um, so what I would have done here is you, you have a DQ like like they had planned. Mm-hmm. And then Brett can lose the title the next night, or he can lose the title at the pay-per-view if if he's going to do that. It doesn't have to be to Sean. Right. Like he can lose to Shamrock and Sean can Sean can beat Shamrock on the Monday Night Raw. Mm-hmm. After Brett's Brett's starting in WCW that night, you want ratings, announce a heavyweight title match on Monday Night Raw. That's what I do. I have Ken Shamrock beat Bret Hart in December. You could even you could even have Sean interfere if you want. And then Sham- Shamrock gets his title win. I don't think he ever won the title. No, he never did. And then you got then you got Sean. Sean can win on the Monday Night Raw, the Raw that Bret Hart debuts on on Nitro, the Monday I'm talking about. Yeah, and then, and then you have Sean as a heel champion. You, you don't have to do the Montreal thing, exactly. Because a lot of people don't know this. They thought Bret Hart's last day in the company was Survivor Series. It wasn't. He had another, he had thirty more days. Mm-hmm. Um, Bret wanted to come out in Ottawa, which was the Raw, and forfeit the title. Yeah, which was another mm-hmm. possible idea. Yeah, but then. That makes the title look weak in Vince's eyes. And then Brett can use that in WCW. I never lost. I'm the, you remember when Ric Flair came to WWF? I'm the real yeah, champion. Exactly. And that was done so well. It was. And then it was kind of weird when he won the title at that Royal Rumble. And then he said, this is the only title that matters. <laughs> well, but, well, at that point. You know, like you're the real champion, but the other belt doesn't matter. Okay. Well, well, to go back, they had a lawsuit. WCW yeah. and NWA had a lawsuit. Yeah, I know. With Vince, but that's another story for another day. Yeah, another day. Okay. Um, now, yeah, so uh, that's kind of like I, I see. That's probably what Brett wanted to do, but um, that that makes Vince's heavyweight title doesn't look as strong. Right. So nobody was ever going to be happy here. No, no one. Like, like once, once Brett said, or once Vince said he couldn't pay him anymore, and that he needed him to get out of the contract. There was no way to do it properly. Yeah. Like, like on the Bruce Pritchard podcast, he said that he would have had Brett lose to the Undertaker at at the UK show, and then you could have had. You could have had Sean. Um, it, it, this was his, his plan, and I actually liked it. Then the match, the Hell in a Cell match, is for the title, and then Sean mm. Sean wins the title at Bad Blood. Okay. And then you can kind of just you you can kind of have Brett do some farewell Survivor Series team match. Mm-hmm. Um. That that was another scenario that I had written down. I'm kind of bouncing around here, but um, so okay. Brett loses the title to the Undertaker, right? At bad at the UK, the UK show. show, yeah. One night only. It's a bad night for the Hart Foundation. Let's <laughs> just say that, okay. <laughs> um, Hell in a Cell match for the title. Kane debuts. Sean wins. Heel champion. Everything is going well. You can have a USA versus Canada Survivor Series match in Montreal. The Hart Foundation can go over. Every, everybody, everybody's happy. Mm-hmm. You don't like how many Survivor Series were there in the early '90s where the title wasn't on the line? Lots of them. A lot, a lot of them. You could have the Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Steve Austin, and. I'm, I don't know who else. Some other guy. 
Ken Shamrock. <laughs> Ken Shamrock. Yeah, we keep throwing no, Ken uh, Shamrock in there. What about and then, maybe maybe and, mankind? And then yeah, because you had you had Austin. Like you could have kept Austin off the show because he he had this like two minute match against Owen Hart. Right. Um and versus our foundation. Brett, Brett, Owen, Jim, and Bulldog. And uh maybe maybe the Bulldog gets gets a win here over Sean or something. To, maybe, yeah. for, for the payback. Um and, and that could be Bret Hart's last match. Standing in the middle of the ring with his brother and his brother in law. His two brother in laws and his brother with their arms in the air and the Canadian flag is waving. And that that's how that show ends rather than well, our Canadian hero smashing monitors. Right. So that's that's probably what I would have done. But like in this era, you have all these egos and you gotta convince them. And Brett Brett had creative control in the last three months of his contract because they uh a lot of times they'll try to bury guys going to the next company yeah similar to uh what happened to uh brian danielson when he got beat by roman reigns now this is something that i kind of remembered before i joined on here with you earlier today and i wanted to talk about this there are people in wrestling who believe that the the screw job and don't say it don't say it don't say it i'm sorry i have to is a work (laughs) man this is like a 25 year work because brett's still pissed (laughs) well okay well let me tell you okay let me tell you where i first heard this scott hall right no Okay. I remember this was about 10 years or so ago. Okay. Uh, there was a wrestling announcer, Joe Dombrowski, who's a very good announcer. Like he does um, English commentary for AAA in Mexico. Okay. He, he came out with a DVD called The Montreal Theory. I didn't, for the record, I did not buy the DVD. But they had these different people on who said or who think claim Montreal was a work. Let me read off the list of people who believe or may claim Montreal was a work. So these people need help tying their shoes. Well you already said you already said Scott Hall. Yeah. He's on the list. We have Bill Apter the, the the wrestling journalist who I've met a couple times, one of the nicest guys you'd ever meet in your life. Great, great person. Okay. Kevin Nash, Bam Bam Bigelow, Road Dog, George the Animal Steel, Chris Canyon, Steve Carino, Tony Mamaluke, Just Incredible, Paul Bearer, and Sonny. Go on, really? But there's more. Jerry Lawler, who was at ringside for the match, said that he could have found it plausible, he were being plausible, that Hart was working with Vince. Yeah. This position was shared by Brett's god-awful nephew, Teddy Hart, and I haven't seen that documentary on Peacock about Teddy Hart. I want to though, but but that, that that's another story for another time. <clears throat> okay. As well as some of Brett's former colleagues, such as Demolition, Road Warrior Animal, Steve Blackman, Gregory Helms, and Sean Waltman. Waltman, who claimed to know Hart well was bewildered as to how Hart could not have seen the screw job coming from a million miles away and felt there was a high possibility of the incident being a work. Waltman added that Hart would not have told anyone, including his wife, about his involvement and deduced, 
I think the screw job was so compartmentalized that the guys that were in on it don't even know who else was. The Pro Wrestling Torch reported that outside of the business, many wrestling fans believe the screw job to have been a work. In an interview in 2022, Bret Hart maintained that he was screwed. Earl Hebner, who refereed the match, was asked in 2019 if he thought Hart was in on the work, to which he replied, I really do. I'm not going to lie about it anymore. Why the hell did he have a car running and run out of the stadium if he thought it was a work? Exactly. And why did Gerald Briscoe... You mean the ultimate Vince McMahon brown noser? Pull Earl Hebner over to the side and then... and tell him that if you don't do this, you're fired. Actually, I shouldn't say that about Gerald. He wishes me a happy birthday on Facebook, so I'm not going <laughs> to. And why, like, there's so many, like, I'm sorry, but it's not a work. No, no. Like, you there's no. Never, there's not a, a never quarter percent. Me. No. You'll never convince me, in a mil- unless Brett does say it, which I, which he won't. No. I'll, I'll never be convinced. It was, it was no. a work. Never. Because it, it wasn't. And actually, it's kind of funny because I was looking on my phone this morning, getting ready for the show today, and there was a headline. It was a minor headline, but it's like, Jim Ross is tired of talking about the Montreal screw job. I think everybody is, but at this time of year, it, it, and it was 25 years. Yeah. We and lived- we've done multiple shows in 97, which I understand. We will get to other years, I promise. Oh, we will. But it's just... You can't have a wrestling podcast without having a Montreal Screwjob episode in your archives. I mean, if if we're going to talk about like historic points in the history of wrestling, this is one of them. There's no yeah. way anyone that was alive the night it happened, either you be a wrestler, a fan, uh, working in another company, can avoid it. There's no way. You don't even have to be a wrestling fan to know what the Montreal Screw Job is. Yeah. That's why it makes it such a big deal. The only people that should not be allowed to talk about it are those that were born in the last 20 years who didn't live it, who didn't experience it. That's just my opinion. I'm not saying... I was in grade nine when it happened. (laughs) I was in the sixth... It's all we talked about at school. Like, do you see I what happened? In sixth grade. Like, I'm locally is Bret Hart country. Mm-hmm. It's all we could talk about. It was like someone died. It's like, do you see what happened to Bret last night? Like, there's a reason why they didn't come to Calgary for like six years because Shawn Michaels would have got shot when they had Bret Hart Appreciation Night in 2010 in Calgary. Mm-hmm. Shawn was still worried. He had extra security. And I don't, I don't I think, it, yeah, that was good. That was a good, but, uh, good but if there is one thing that we can say to kind of put a bow on this, is that while this may be the most infamous event in the history of our business and our sport, it kind of has a happy ending because Brad and Sean made up yep. on television. The first Raw of 2010, they made up on television. And that was legit because they, yeah. they didn't want to see each other in the back before. That was yeah. the first time they had seen each other. And you could kind of see when, when Brett's hugging him, he, he kind of seems like he doesn't exactly want to do it. But like like it's, it's not as sincere mm-hmm. if you watch it. He's like, he's slapping him on the back. But I, I think he, he's happy. Yeah, he's on, a that, on that raw. He carried a lot of negative feelings. And I mean, you know, Brad and Vince, they've made up. Yep. You know, so it's like we have this big thing, but we end up having kind of a happily ever after. 
Yeah. In a, in the weirdest sense. But. Yeah. It's just it's too bad what happened with Brett. Like if if Brett would have went to WCW and had a couple good years, and then mm-hmm. he came back. Like oh, if he I came mean, back in like two thousand or two thousand one, when the business was doing better. Yeah. Or like after WCW was purchased, if Brett walked on the stage. I don't know. Him and Angle would have been a dream match. Yeah. That yeah, for sure. Yeah, Angle and Brett would have been incredible. Wow. What could have been? Yeah. But we talked about it. This is mm-hmm. a show I definitely wanted to do. Yeah. Um, little late. We're January yeah. 2nd here. It's, yeah, it's okay. 20, 25 years and a month and a half or whatever. Yeah, they'll, they'll let us. They'll let us buy. Our, our <laughs> fans are pretty. Our fans are pretty good. I think they'll let yeah. us slide on this one. Yeah, we got good fans. But yeah, so um, I think probably our next show will probably do a poll situation. If you want, I'm thinking of doing a possible pay per view. Yeah, I think right. maybe we should. Maybe, how about we both pick a Royal Rumble? Yes, because I I got a couple in my head that kind of swirling. All right, well well let's just shoot right now. Oh man, do you do you already have one? That's my question. Of course, I already have one. <laughs> All right, I, I got to hear yours, then I'll make my decision. Okay. Um. You know what? There's so many good ones. I know. There's so many freaking good ones. Um, since we're, it, it, it's almost chronological. That this is going to be another 25 year anniversary. I'm going to pick 98 because we just talked all the build up to it. That's a hell of a show. You got, you got Sean. You got Austin winning. Sean and Undertaker in a casket match and i don't remember that much else about the show i'm i i think that would be my pick all right um okay then i'm gonna go with my strongest card uh because i had <laughs> three in my head well you you can shoot all three we can put all four on the on the poll if you want are, are you sure Sure. No, what, no, that's no. That, why don't that's Why don't you? Point. Okay, here you pick two. I'll pick two. We'll okay. put it on there, and we'll All see right. what happens. All right. Um, my first, my first one. All right. My first one is going to be my strongest one, I think, okay. and it's actually one of my favorite Rumble shows of all time. Okay. Royal Rumble, nineteen ninety. Okay. Because that one is the one where we get Hogan and warrior face to face. And with the exception of 92 may be the best roster for a rumble ever. I think. Yeah. Um, Um, kind of those rumbles before 93, I don't get into as much because they weren't for anything. That's the only thing I didn't like about them. Um, you know what? Okay, my other one is going to be kind of an anniversary one. Okay. Since you did 25, I'm going to go a little bit younger. I'm going to pick Royal Rumble 2008. And that okay. one has Jeff Hardy and Orton for the WWE title. Yep. Edge and Rey Mysterio for the World Heavyweight title. And probably one of the five best rumbles ever. Yep. And uh, 20, 29 and 30 are uh, kind of big time mm. wrestlers. And a big surprise return, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Guy's supposed to be out eight months. He came back in three and a half. Mm-hmm. All right. So do you have your other one? <laughs> it's kind of funny because I watched that Royal Rumble like a couple days ago. 
I, I didn't watch the the whole show. I watched the Royal Rumble match he was on. With on the, the exception network. of honestly, with the exception of like one match, that's a pretty solid show. Yeah. Okay. Um. What one of my other favorite rumbles, and this has a little bit to do with one of the guys that we talked about today. I'm gonna go with uh, Royal Rumble 1994. Ooh. You got okay. the. The craziness ending and a few other few other gems. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and I think we got an Undertaker casting match in both my yes, picks. Yes, we do. We do. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, so I got. Uh, see, I'm I'm more old school. You're going 2008 for your I, first. I know because I got be 94, honest. 94 and 98 are my picks. I'll be honest. The other one that I was considering was 91. Only because we talked about the whole Iraqi Sergeant Slaughter situation. <laughs> oh, that's like, such a beauty. But I'm like, no, we yeah. can't. I, I can't do back to back years. I'll put that one in for another show. Yeah, so we'll do 08 because that's a hell of a show. So right. So you got 90 and 08, mm-hmm. and you've got 94 and 98. Yeah. Wow. So okay. I can do... I cannot wait to see how this vote <laughs> turns out. Yeah. Now, what we can do if you want, we can do um, back-to-back pay-per-view reviews and just have the top two be our next two shows if you want. That's fine because, with me. Like, I'm thinking January could be the Royal Rumble month. Yeah. Maybe we could, uh, our pay-per-view or our, our next wrestler review could be somebody that's won multiple times, maybe. Maybe. Something like that. But we will let the people decide on this. Yes. Uh, on our next we, are, we are a democratic system. We let you, the people, decide. You know, you know what? If if you're okay with this, because I just thought of this. I'm okay with everything, man. Let's go. I'm excited. All right, I'm going to go out with your wife tonight. No, I'm just right. kidding. Take her um, out. No, 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 no. Fun. How about <laughs> for this one time, unless this becomes very successful and we make it an annual tradition, how about we let our fans, our Facebook group, they get more than one vote on these rumbles. Okay. Like they could pick multiple of the of the four. Sure. So so you guys don't have to pull your hair out, you know. I don't know who to pick. Ah, <laughs> they're all great. So, <laughs> yeah. So that's what we'll do is we'll do those four. We'll let you guys have multiple picks of the four, and the yep. two that win are going to be the next two shows. And um, I'll also have okay. So I'll I'll post it on the Facebook group. I'll get you to tweet this to your followers as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can put it on your wrestling show page as yeah. well. We'll get what, we'll, and then we'll calculate all these votes. Yeah. Now, I think our biggest one was Ultimate Warrior and Earthquake. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Amount of feedback we got, we still got to do an earthquake show. Like he got some love. He did. I was he just, so impressed. He just didn't have a chance. I know. Against the, like because of all the controversy the warrior brings. I know. Like <laughs> eh, earthquake? No, I don't want to. Uh, no, ultimate warrior. Someday we'll do it. Yeah, we'll 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 do an earthquake or disco inferno, and earthquake will probably win. Hopefully. How long of a show would that be? Disco Inferno, probably like twenty minutes. Maybe. Everyone <laughs> <laughs> is he was in the NWO and nobody knew why or how. He just or came out one day. He just came out and he was wearing a shirt. <laughs> like it never happened where he was. Yep. Like oh, Disco Inferno is the NWO. That's cool. <laughs> uh, that's what killed the NWO. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So uh, if you enjoyed us. Please join our Facebook group. It is the DK and Bill Wrestling Podcast. Join us. Love us. Because we got a pretty good group of people. I think so. Please invite your friends, too, Mm because we are trying to grow the group. Mm -hmm. It's getting there. It is. It really is. We understand not everyone that likes wrestling, but we're trying to convert them. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for, uh, for bearing with us with this show a little bit longer than normal but it's worth it 
I hope everyone's excited for Royal Rumble. Maybe leave a comment who who you think is going to win the Royal Rumble this year. Mm-hmm. See what happens. There's probably a few different options. I yeah. hope it's not The Rock, because that would be weird. I heard some rumors, The Rock coming back and winning the Rumble. You don't have to do that. <laughs> you can have him face Roman Reigns if you want. You don't have to have him win the Rumble. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Detail have some uh, hot takes about that. If, mm-hmm. if that so, all right. Stay tuned for that. Yep. Well, thank Thanks you again, all everyone. for... Have yes. a good one. Peace. Bye. Bye.